For a long time, I didn't have community. It feels like a second family. Community is kind of everything to me. That was just the most important thing for me. Professional free ride skier. Mm -hmm. what, like, I don't, what would your title be? Yeah, still, should I say still professional for us? Mm -hmm. My title would be I'm a free ride world champion. Yep, but then and a coach, right? Yeah, mental strength coach. Okay, so I'm Lauren Huber, uh, free ride world champion and mental strength coach. Okay, like perfect. That. All right, let's do so that. Just I'm Lorraine Huber. I'm a Freeride World Champion and Mental Strength Coach. So I am a bit of a late starter, I would say. I started competing when I was 28. That was a result of I wasn't ever in any kind of professional ski program or anything like that. But I was a ski instructor and through ski instructing and slowly got into shooting and friends of mine said, hey Lorraine, you should really join a couple of competitions. And so I did. And the first couple of comps went really well. I was able to qualify. 2012 was the first full season I spent on tour. Back when I was getting into competition and really developing as a competitive athlete, for a long time I didn't have community. So as a free ride athlete, you're very much on your own. There's no team, there's no coaches, there's no support system, there's no nothing, it's just us. So the process was a, it was a steep learning curve and it took me a couple of years to get into this group of boys or men, I should say, at the Alberg at my ski area and become an accepted member in their group. They were technically better skiers than I was and stronger. So I'm convinced that my growth was accelerated as a skier because I was trying to keep up with them. I think it's more important than anything else as a freeride skier, as an athlete, but also as any kind of professional, I think, to have a really good group around you of people who are motivated, who pursue similar goals. Even if we're like not a team sport. We still function very much as a team. We operate sometimes more like a family than we do a team of, of individual sport athletes. It feels like a second family. I mean, on the tour, I would just sense who I could collaborate with and who not, and I would just hang out with my girls where we could talk very openly. We were very supportive of each other. And, you know, if you're not feeling maybe very motivated that day or strong, they can kind of pull you along a little bit. I mean, my community has gotten me through the hardest two years of my life. You know, any walk of life, you need a community, you need mentors, you need people around you to, to feel that energy, to bounce ideas off of, to help you maybe when you're low. I used to be really stressed out at the competitions and it came from a place of, of crashing, of not being able to ski my line, just of not doing well. What that ended up doing for me is that I felt a lot of pressure at the event and I couldn't deal with that pressure. I would fall apart. I would ski super slow. It looked like I had my handbrake on. And I actually told myself for a while there that I just don't have what it takes. I'm not cut out for this competition thing. And luckily though, I didn't believe that because that was bullshit what I was telling myself. Instead of focusing on outcomes, and on fixed results and points, I learned to focus on the process. So in my case, simply skiing my line that I have chosen from the start gate to the finish line. Just that, things that you're actually doing at that point in time and not on the outcome that you wanna get. The whole reason for being there is to learn and grow, something that you wanna sink your teeth into. 
what I'm actually doing here is working through this stuff, so it's all good. I'm doing exactly what I set out to do. That might sound simple now, but it was a quantum leap in my mind. And when my whole aim of being at the event shifted from winning to learning and growing, I didn't have any more pressure. And so I was able to let go and just be like, okay, I'm just here to learn and grow. And that was my goal. And then as a, a byproduct, I became world champion. Throughout my competition career, I, I experienced very supportive women, and then also I experienced the opposite. Situations where it was kind of like athlete versus athlete. People that, that thrive on, you know, cutthroat competition. And just that kind of duality that exists within a lot of women I've worked with is really hard. The unfortunate thing, I think, is that a lot of women have this real mindset of scarcity. Such this sense of, like, scarcity. Competing for college spots, NORAM start spots. It's really hard to not be really competitive with other women. Feisty and to get sucked into the negative sides of competition. This idea of this, the token female, and there's, there's the one. And if, if it's you, then it's not me. Maybe in every team, like, one woman. I'm the token female here. I can't have any other females in this environment who are maybe at my level or better than me because that's threatening. It was hard for me in the beginning to like not, I don't know, not be the only one anymore. And they see that as exactly as that. They see that as threatening instead of being stoked on having other women to share with and to push each other up. And now I feel like when I look back, it really helped me because as soon as I got to ski more with girls, I'm like, yeah, they're girls too. Like, if they can do it, why would I not be able to do it? That really helped me a lot and that helped the level of free skiing in general, like that there is more girls now and there is more girls that are pushing now. I've learned so much from the amazing women that I've been surrounded by on the ski team and learned how to challenge myself in so many ways because of watching, honestly, the badassery that's been all around me. Reach out, like try and lift each other up. Don't let your ego get in the way. It really depends on like the leaders in the community to show vulnerability. I often talk about my progression from being a mental wreck at the competitions and super stressed out to becoming mentally very strong and resilient. I think it takes a level of vulnerability and acceptance with yourself to kind of let others in. When you do see really wonderful examples of women lifting women. It's kind of like a spiral. More girls get into it, so more girls get good, so then everyone gets pushed. It is a cliche to, you know, women supporting women, but it makes a really big difference. Reach out. Like, try and lift each other up. Don't let your ego get in the way. Even when it's scary, even when I feel like maybe I'm putting my own career at risk. And the test of that confidence, the test of that security is can I open myself up and share it with someone else? Towards the end of my career on the World Tour where I was one of the veteran riders, I, I really got this sense of responsibility of wanting to pass on knowledge and experience to the other competitors. And I think you almost have responsibility to do that as an older, more experienced athlete. When I was younger, I wouldn't have ever thought that women skiing was gonna like go into the direction it is now. So many guys like said, oh, if you can ever do this trick, like, I don't think you, women will ever do that and then now they're doing it and I'm like, see, like if there is enough women that push each other and like help each other and they get supported, the level is possible. I think now that I know it's possible, that really motivates me to see where we can go in the future.
women need other women. You realize that you're so much better off when you bring others with you rather than push others down to get where you're going. It sounds so cheesy, but when one boat rises, they all rise, and just trying to like actually believe that. And the only way it's gonna get better is if you try to just force yourself, you know, those insecurities, you know, that not wanting to give up your space, turn that off, because it, it's never gonna be better for the next generation, the next wave of female athletes, if I stay in that mindset. You know, if women find other women to be in the mountains with and participate in things like free riding and mountain biking, I think it really develops them as people as well. It's just so fun to see the women come together and really develop a community because I know how empowering and how powerful that can be to have that community there going after things, getting out there and getting into the doing part, not just wishing they could also be out there. And to have those like-minded people around you is, is really important.